and being watched by a lot of, you know, greats like Radar Beck and some other guys. NBA, I, that's a goal, but we're just going to have to wait and see how it turns out at the end of this year and how things are. And just totally put it on a, on a pedestal and say, hey, look at me. This is it. This is what you get. See what you get and feel what you like. How the NBA crossed over into fashion part two with Dennis Rodman. All right, so Dennis Rodman was born and raised in Trenton, New Jersey. He studied and practiced basketball literally every day. One thing that makes him a really great uh, under was definitely him just studying the ball and where I need to go and how to play the best way. He didn't do too well in high school from what I learned in research. He got into Cook County College. Now it's named as North Central College. He got in by like a family friend and he's able to get into that school. Eventually he flanked out and he's got scouted out by a coach at Southern Eastern Oklahoma. So the coach actually found out about this. The coach went to his house, banged on the story multiple times, asking him like, can you play please, please, pretty much begging him to get in the team with him. Then said, all right, I'll go, whatever. And the rest is literally his theory, right? He became one of the best defenders in the league, literally and in college. He was one of the best. So in 1986, not so many photos for this one. As you know, it's in the 80s, so we have some stuff that we can use. I just used what I could do for the video. So I did the Detroit Pistons when he was playing, and then some photos of random people that also got signed also that day as well. So he got signed to the Detroit Pistons in 1986. He is a fronting and wearing, I think, one of the cutest shoes. I think they're really, really cute. It's called the BB5600. It's by Reebok. These are really nice, sleek shoes. I don't have a pair of Reeboks. Maybe one day I'll get them, but I like them. I love high tops and the detailing of the color. Three stripes always get me, but I love the little Velcro straps they used to have. It reminds me of Skechers. I a little bit better than laces. He became one of the best tenacious, the tenacious <coughs> rebounder with his amazing opponent with the punk guard, Isaiah Thomas. And also, they have a very interesting style of playing, also known as Detroit Bad Boys, as in they do anything to win. So literally, all bets off before we got more regulated into sports about what, how to play, has to be as aggressive. He and everyone on his team went in, especially when Jordan was on the floor. His brief time at the Chicago Bulls, something about that. He was there from 95 to 98. He had a lot more limelight when he got signed to the Bulls. It was kind of like, it was already happening. He was on the Spurs team as well, but I feel like it kind of like catapulted into career limelight to who he is now when it comes to fashion scene, definitely when he got signed to the Bulls. So he got signed 95 to 98. It's really the iconic thing um, from um, The Last Dance, the 40 hours in Vegas, which we have no idea what happened, but we know it was probably pretty intense to the point that MJ and I think the whole team literally went there to pick his ass up. That's so, so crazy. With the Bulls, he was able to win three championships. Um, and also, he has one of the craziest hairstyles. We'll highlight that soon. Okay, so as his time with the Bulls, he's able to get not one shoe though. He's able to get two shoes with Converse. Everybody and think for myself. I'll be myself. Would you see me then? So, like I said, as his time for the Bulls, he was able to get a shoe deal with Converse. So his first shoe deal is gonna be the Converse All-Star 91 in 1997. It was his first shoe collab. And this shoe also came in a handful of colorways. I really do like the detail of like the little 75 he has on his little hat. Like the stuff that Dennis Rodman adds to his shoes are make it a little bit more different than we've never seen before. The next shoe collab that he has with Converse is called the Converse All-Star Rod 
Oh, the Converse also arrived in 1997. That's the second shoe collab, and it also really highlights his tattoo. He has like a big sundial on his arm, and also has one also in his belly button. And I really do love these shoes a lot. I never thought I would actually like these. Um, they're so cute, durable for him, and I love the aesthetic of it. I just love how he has like its own signature tattoo literally on the shoe. I definitely need that. I wish Converse came with more colorways of this. I like this in blue, pink. I don't even care about the color. I know in the 90s and 80s, the main colors was red, blue, black, pretty much a lot of masculine colors. So there's not really much you could do with that, I think, when it comes to like colorways. Um, but yeah, those shoes are my favorite. The Converse All Star Rodman in 1997. Stella. So as I said before, we're gonna highlight some of my favorite hairstyles that Dennis Rodman had worn on the court when he came to the Spurs and also um, the Chicago Bulls. So one hairstyle I wanna highlight is the threes that he had when he came to Scottie Pippen coming back to um, the Bulls and also the red ribbon he had also in the back of his head to um, be in support of the HIV AIDS pandemic that was happening in the 90s. I think it's really cool that he's able to literally spray paint David Letterman's head. That's All right. I'm gonna highlight how that there was barely any time for players to have individualism. So the fact that Dennis Rodman, be even before Alan Iris, was really having the tattoos, the cool outfits, and the crazy hair. But it was really cool to have little elements of expressing yourself. It reminds me when I when I was living in private school, we always had a uniform, but I can only change the accessories. So I had the crazy shoes every single time and accessories all over my head. I had little headbands, bracelets. I tried my stuff, my best to express myself in a way that even though it constrained me what I could wear to school, but at least I can add like a little element with my accessories. It's like my hair and my accessories. Also want to highlight too, um, Dennis Rodman did have a hairstylist. His name is David Chapa. They always went back and forth about what would look best. And also Dennis Rodman also did his hair too, but he also had some help with that as well. All right, so now let's get into and let's get looking about Dennis Rodman's favorite looks, some of my favorite looks. So first we're going to talk about is the MTV Awards. He goes there the first year and the second year. The first year he goes, I believe that's 1996 or 7, um, and his date is the amazing, the beautiful singer Tony Braxton. He's wearing like this... Um, I want to say it's silk. I forgot what material it is, like rayon, I think. And it's like translucent, uh, like a beige top with this blonde, um, blonde bleached hair. And it has a nice blazer and both suede and a cute little belt, like a sparkly belt. The one year after that, I think it's 1998, I believe so. Uh, he's wearing this cute sparkly tank top and these like low rise pants with his boxes showing. It's almost equivalent to Ice Spice wearing her thongs. Or I would say anything that Cisco was doing. Dennis Rodman really like pioneered and pushed the spectrum when it comes to like not literally just fashion, but particular type of fashion. Definitely indie sleeves. I know that wasn't there yet because it comes definitely in the late 2000s, but definitely indie sleeves inspired. And also I would say Afrofuturism or anything that reminds you of. Um, ooh. I think we will come to me in a second. Um, fifth element, fifth element. So yeah, that was some outfits I love so much for MTV Awards. Oh, also, one more thing. He's also wearing, again, the red ribbon to give support for HIV and AIDS. This man's a big advocate for the LGBTQ, so that's amazing. All right, so now let's talk about the infamous Vibe Magazine shoe with Dennis Rodman and Madonna. So, Vibe Magazine reached out obviously to Dennis Rodman and to do this photo shoot. It was a two hour interview with Madonna and Madonna asked him questions about his life, who he is, all the kind of good juicy stuff that you have in a news article, right? A magazine article. So Vibe is essentially by Quincy Jones and he wanted to be more about black culture, black people doing the thing that was happening in the 90s and all that kind of good stuff in between. Unfortunately though, Quincy Jones reached out to Madonna's publicist and pretty much said, you know, we really want to focus on the black people. We just don't want to have this person on here because that's the direction that we're going to go into. And Madonna did not like that. And she said that, well, you obviously hate interracial mixed couples. If you don't have it, it doesn't make any sense. But like, it was more than that. I guess Madonna 
just couldn't see besides you know her fetish she really couldn't skip past that point like girl like it's more than just like you be with a black man in a magazine it's more about like how we need to have us to represent us we need to have it to represent our hair what we're talking about our culture all right so now let's talk about the movie i never knew he was in double teen with van damn very different offense gets the glory <laughs> but defense wins the game <laughs> but i was really surprised when i saw this outfit i really thought it was a photo shoot for like i don't know like a magazine never heard of before or like a very not but yeah, that's pretty much never happened before, like an indie magazine, if anything. Because right. I've always saw this, and I thought it was Fifth Element. I thought it was like a Janet Jackson video. I was very surprised that it was actually a movie. And did I watch it? Um, mm, I tried watching like Tim. I'm not gonna lie to you. I I I didn't watch it. I ain't watch it like that. But it's just like, cause like there's a lot of like. I'm not gonna say trashy. It's not supposed to be trashy, but I would say it's a lot of like, I just, I don't know, like I watched Jen this like act for an hour and a half though. Like he's a main character in the movie. Regardless of that. His outfit is so, so futuristic. Uh, the glasses to so this, it reminds me of you know, Xenon on Disney Channel. Supernova girl, you didn't know. A supernova girl, you know what I'm talking about? But yeah, it definitely reminded me of that futuristic, out of this world, interstellar, never be seen, never before. And also, I don't know if you noticed, all the events that have been happening are literally at the same time. Like this man had a busy, busy time from the Spurs to the Bulls to him being the most iconic gender bender, black, tall man doing all the crazy theatrics. I never thought I would need it in my life, to be honest. It's amazing to see. Clear the street. Clear the street. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So final thing I want to talk about with Dennis is the iconic wedding dress, but he literally marries himself. And close so bye. <laughs> and this was also for the press tour, the book that he came out with, his self-memoir, Bad As I Wanna Be. I can't believe he married himself and calls it bisexual. Like, I don't know. The only person I can think of someone doing this is Lady Gaga when she came off as like this Joe guy that she was, Italian Joe guy, and she was dating herself. And that was like, what, back in 2008 or 9? I was very much on the MTV Awards, and I was like, Lady Gaga, like, what are you doing? But also, I was so into the characters. I was like, is it Lady Gaga? I couldn't tell if that Joe Pelosi guy, I forgot what his last name was, but I couldn't think if that man was actually Lady Gaga. She got me fooled for real. Like almost every woman that came out Lady Gaga, I believed it. Cause I was like, she was so different and out of this world. The only person too that I could also compare to this Ramen at time, I forgot to mention that in the last clip, was definitely RuPaul. Like both seven foot tall men. I think RuPaul's up there, at least like six three. Um just changing the way that we perceive men and definitely black men in general um but yeah going back to the book bad as i want to be um i think that I, the clips that i have right now i'm a fan of his but i don't really like the wedding dress it looks kind of like a faggot letting other people feel more comfortable with themselves and doing what they want as well in the nba and everywhere he's a real inspiration <laughs> he looked really great yeah, in the dress someone whoever did his makeup did a really good job this time He's original and he does his own thing and when well, we were talking about how like I hate it, I think it's the F word or I think that's cool, I think it's different. It is cool. It is different. It's so admirable to see somebody comfortable um with their life and able to be like i feel like wearing this today and i'm going to and i don't really care that i'm this tall or i look like this or i sound like this i just want to wear it because i can't i just don't care i think the reason why dennis rabbit is also is very open to wear these things is because um the incident happened to him um i think it was on a spurs team i've been almost committing mm -hmm. and i think that made him realize that like you know i need to live for myself I need to not listen to other people and find enjoyment what makes me happy. And I think it's very admirable to see that in a black man to express himself um, wholeheartedly and to be genuine about who he is as a person. Because the way that we view black men and how we view men in general is that they have to be a certain standard, especially black people. Like if I'm not 
having my hair laid or listening to music, we have this notion of like, what are you doing? You need to get in line. Because even though we always want people to be individuals, but when they are, we can make fun of. And I think it's something to look at when it comes to Dennis. Be yourself. Who cares? Change the structure, change the way the society views you, and to live for yourself. Hmm. That is Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs>